Ready with me for my best friend's wedding and story time about how I got fired from a job that she got me because a guy accused me of sexually assaulting him. I guess attempted sexual assault is more like it. Obviously, my beautiful best friend is getting married today. It was actually this past weekend, but I showed up with my hair really clean. Serena and I met when we studied at the same conservatory, Stella Adler Studio of Acting in New York City. This is also where I met my husband, so we've known each other for 10 years. You guys, this was back in 2012. By the way, I completely changed my hairstyle because Serena gave me a gift basket, and in the gift basket, there was this beautiful bow on it. So I decided I needed to incorporate the bow into my hair. I went ahead and started straightening my hair, which I had washed in the morning. Look how shiny my hair looks. Shout out to my K18 shampoo for that. Back to the story. After we graduated from school, I actually did book a few roles. I got the role of playing the girlfriend of Harvey Keitel and the comedian and some other stuff. Then I got married and then I went back to New York and I had no job. Serena at the time was working for a company called S3, like the letter S and the number three. I'm done hiding from these people, so I am calling them out. Oh, I also started curling the ends of my hair, which unfortunately the curls did not stay, but it still looked pretty. So Serena got me the job and let me tell you there were only men working at this office with the exception of one other woman and serena and me so you can imagine it was a very misogynistic place to work at men would stare at us like we were martians but mostly because they were looking at our bodies how beautiful does my hair look go to part two Ready with me for my bestie's wedding, plus story time about how she got me a job that I was fired from for supposedly offering a guy a BJ. Like I said in part one, working here was weird because there were only men, except for one other woman, Serena and me. Serena is my best friend, by the way, who was getting married today. By the way, this whole filming of this process was super uncomfortable because I didn't have a really good setup, but I did my best. By the way, I tried a new foundation, the hourglass one, and it was phenomenal. Beautiful. I ended up getting sat next to this one guy. He was the youngest guy in the office, good looking, he was really funny. Everyone told me that as soon as I started working there, this guy completely changed. He was funny, he was talking, he was making jokes. He literally looked happy at the job before I showed up apparently he was not very much like that so him and I would have really cool conversations we would talk about movies and all that but obviously we're at work so it was nothing weird eventually we started talking about the women that he dated which I would give him advice and whatever it was nothing deep but then one day the manager Gabe he emails me and tells me that I don't need to show up for work you guys I almost pooped my pants I had a bad feeling I asked him why and he said oh we're just not that busy today and the following day he asked me not to show up again he just didn't have the balls to fire me part two is up with me for my bestie's wedding plus story time about how I got fired from a job for supposedly sexually assaulting somebody or attempted. Because my manager at this job called S3 did not have the balls to fire me, he actually asked Serena, my best friend, the girl who is getting married today, who I am getting ready for, yeah, he asked her to fire me. She asked me to meet her at the park and as soon as I get there, she starts to cry. So I start to cry. Then she tells me that they fired me. And guess what? They didn't even give her a reason. I go home, I'm depressed for the next two weeks, I'm crying every single day. But Serena got to investigating. Two months later, she calls me while I'm in Egypt. She tells me the truth apparently the guy that i sat next to every single day at this job by the way his name is justin he invented this whole lie about how i would accost him in the kitchen at work i would offer myself to him and on several occasions i asked him if he wanted a bj at work in reality this guy was so in love with me that he couldn't sit next to me at work every day so he figured the best thing to do to get rid of me was to invent a lie to get me fired by the way the day that i got fired i texted him and he felt so bad he even offered me money you guys all the while, he was the one that got me fired. Should I sue these people? This is the final makeup look for the wedding. I love you guys. Bye. Story time about how my bumble date tried to choke me. This man was trying to kill me. Disclaimers and all my story time was sent me on Instagram. After the first date, I decided to give it another chance. I ended up going on a date with a guy who I'm pretty sure was gay. The whole time, we talked about his best friend and how great his best friend was. And he definitely sounded different. So by the end of the date, I asked him if he was bi. He acted all offended and said no. So obviously, I never went on a date with him again. When I got home that night, I decided to get back on the app and look for another date. As you do. And that's when I saw the guy. The one who choked me. Let me start by saying he was definitely the most attractive guy I had seen on the app until that point. Which was one of the reasons why I really wanted to go on a date with this guy. Up until that point, all these other guys were like fives he was definitely a 10 he connected right away and he asked me out on a date that very weekend and i said yes i was so excited to actually meet this one specific guy because he was so attractive i went all out and went to get waxed i got my hair done the weekend comes around and we end up meeting at a bar we met sparks flew it was amazing but after three drinks he started getting very aggressive he started grabbing my butt and everything else if you know what i mean part three is up.
Story time about how my bumble date ended up choking me. That's when he started getting sexually aggressive. Like, really bad. He had only had his third drink, which led me to believe that he probably had a couple of other drinks before he came to our date. He was trying to grab at everything. My butt and even my V. Of course, I pushed his hands away, and the only reason I didn't leave is because I'm like, okay, he's had a couple of drinks, and he's probably just attracted to me, instead of telling him to stop and straight up leaving the bar. After 45 minutes, I told him that I was going to go home. Then he says, I need a ride home. Can you give me one? And I said yes, big mistake. We get into my car and he actually started gagging, like he was gonna be sick. I asked him to get out of my car and he said no, I'm good. And that's when he just leans over and starts trying to kiss me. Instead of a normal kiss, he got up on the chair and on top of me. When I told him to stop, he grabbed my neck. 30 seconds later, I woke up. So yeah, he had choked me. He looked terrified. He got off of me and just left the car. I went straight to the police and they told me that they couldn't actually charge him because I didn't even know his real name. It turns out on the app he had used a fake ID. I reported him to the app but nothing happened. What should I do? Story time about how my bumble date tried to choke me. I mean, he was literally trying to kill me. Disclaimer is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. This was by far the worst date I've ever been on. Let me just say, I've had really bad dates. A little backstory. It all started last year when I left my broke-ass boyfriend. He would expect me to pay for everything because I was earning more money than him. So literally from one day to the next, I kicked him out of my apartment and I had all this newfound freedom. Now here's the thing. My friends all use dating apps and they never had such bad experiences. So I figured I should try it out too. To tell you that one of my best friends got married to one of her Bumble dates... I had high hopes. I downloaded Bumble the day after I broke up with my boyfriend. It was probably too soon, but honestly, I was just trying to have fun. My first date was okay. I wasn't necessarily attracted to this guy, but he was very successful and very funny. And when a guy can make me laugh, that goes a long way. So it kind of tricked me into believing that he was like, okay. So I decided to go on another date with him. Only the second time, all he kept talking about was Trump. So I got up from the table and I left him there. I mean, that's one thing about me. If I don't like you, I will straight up leave the table. I mean, I'm not wasting my precious time on some guy. Part two is... Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time, I sent me on Instagram. Growing up, I was really awkward. My parents always used to call me the ugly duckling, but my dad told me not to worry that when I would grow up, I would become beautiful. Honestly, this really stuck to my head and I am very beautiful now. I used to have braces, acne. My hair has always been curly, but I didn't know how to treat it back then. My mom had really straight hair, so she had no idea how to do my hair either. And this was the toughest thing for me. I would show up to school with knots in my hair because I didn't even know how to brush it. Eventually, my mom did start taking better care of my hair, which really helped. I also didn't know how to dress for my body. I wore big hoodies, big t-shirts, while the other girls in my high school dressed for their body type. I honestly just had no clue. I did get bullied, but mostly by boys. I think the girls probably just felt bad for me, so I never really had problems with other girls. A group of boys would always bother me. One of them even asked me out pretending that he wanted to go out with me. Of course I said yes because I actually believed him. He asked me to go to the movies, and when I showed up, he wasn't there. I decided to go watch the movie anyway, but the next day in school, I couldn't hear the end of it. To my face, this guy called me stupid. A few days later, they made a list of the ugliest girls. Part 2 is up. Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. That's when the boys came out with the list of the ugliest girls in high school. What they did was pass around some flyers with all the names on it, and then they had people write the number one ugliest girl on the list. As soon as I saw my name on the list, I wanted to die. I pretended I was sick and went home. There was this one girl who actually stood up for me and the rest of the girls, and she was actually one of the prettiest girls in the entire school. She told everyone to knock it off, but nobody listened to her. Instead, the boys added her to the list as well, but there was no way that she was going to get voted number one. I would show up every day to school that week wishing that I was dead. Finally, on Friday, they came out with the winner. And of course, everyone picked me. I was completely mortified, but I actually started laughing when I saw the list. It was like the stress from the entire week had finally accumulated, and my reaction was to just laugh. While they were all hoping that I was just going to break down and cry, I started to laugh in their faces. The teacher asked me what was wrong and I showed her the list. She ran over to the principal's office and everything became way too dramatic for me. So I literally decided to run away from school. When I got home, I told my parents everything. Part 3 is up. Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. When I got home and told my parents what happened, my dad actually started to cry. He actually did feel really bad for me. They sat me down and told me that looks weren't everything. That's when my dad told me again that I would grow out of this awkward phase. Then they decided to take me shopping to the mall. We went into this really cute clothing store that I had always wanted to go to but never had the courage to. And they actually bought me a full wardrobe. After that, that's when my mom took me to a salon and they actually did my hair. They gave me a whole hair care routine, which I had never even heard of before. And I even went and got some Noxzema, which actually the Noxzema really worked for my acne. So when I got back to school, I felt like a different person, but not really because I was still me. The principal had gone out of her way to make all the boys pay, but really they only got suspension and didn't go to school for a week. The rest of high school was actually not that bad. I did look a lot better. Five years later, I'm absolutely gorgeous. And guess what? One of the boys who bullied me actually slipped into my DMs last week. What should I say? 
story time about how my husband left me for my twin brother. I would come home and find my twin brother on the couch with my husband. Of course, I just thought they were trying to get to know each other. I mean, we just got married and all. Got to the point where my brother was coming over to my place every single day. And my husband and him would hang out all day together. My husband works from home, so he's always there. I own my own business, so I'm usually not home before 3 p.m. Every time I would come home, my twin brother was already there. Actually, I told my twin brother he needed to give me and my new husband our privacy. That's when he said that I was overreacting and that he was just trying to get to know him. Then he said, are you jealous? I looked him straight in the face and I said, why should I be jealous? You're my twin brother. Then he laughed, got up, and left my house. And just like that, I knew something was going on. In part one, I told you guys about those friends that warned me about my husband being gay. I decided to call on my friends and ask them to tell me why they thought my husband might be gay. They gave me lists. And I started writing everything down. And everything started connecting. I'd come to the realization that I married a gay man and that he was possibly having an affair with my twin brother. I mean, could things get worse? I decided to confront my husband. What he told me literally shocked me. Part three is up. Story time about how my husband left me for my twin brother. I confronted my husband. He told me that my brother essentially had been following him around and wouldn't leave him alone. In other words, he was putting all the blame on my brother. But instead of believing him right away, I grilled him. I started asking him questions about his past, like why he had never had a relationship before me with another woman, why all of my friends, literally all of them, thought he was gay. Of course, he denied everything, so I got on the phone and called my brother. I asked him to come over really quick, and he did. And of course, I started interrogating him too. That's when I told my husband to repeat what he had told me. But he couldn't. He looked my brother and said sorry i told her the truth my brother said which is and my husband says you won't leave me alone and that you've been harassing me that's when my brother tried to swing at him then my brother spilled all the beans he said that on my wedding night my husband and him made out and that after that my brother would come to our house after i left every single morning to be with my husband and to do all the nasty things they wanted to do to each other my brother told me that the one who started it was my husband i looked at my husband and he couldn't deny anything i divorced him the next day my now ex is trying to convince my brother to be in a relationship with him but he doesn't want to and my my dad is hunting my ex down. Bye. Story time about how my boyfriend shames me for having cellulite. Disclaimer is not my story time with cinnamon on Instagram. I'm 24 years old and my boyfriend is 21. According to him, he has never been with any girl who's had cellulite before. Or even an ounce of body fat. Yes, I know what you're thinking. He's a total asshole. Which in that sense, he is. But the rest of the time, he's completely fine and actually sweet. We met last year at a friend's party. At the party, I instantly fell in love with him. I thought he was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. And it was reciprocated. I saw him from across the room and he made eye contact. A few minutes later, he walked over to me and destroyed up a conversation. I know that people present themselves the way they want to be seen, especially when they're trying to impress someone they're attracted to. He started telling me about how he's studying to be a doctor, how he volunteers at animal shelters, and that every single weekend he also volunteers at the soup kitchen. Everything he said was absolutely perfect. By the end of the night, he had asked me out on a date and I said yes. I did explain to him that I didn't want anything serious and he said that was totally fine. I was trying to focus on my studies, so having a boyfriend was not in my plans. But after we went on seven dates, he asked me to be his girlfriend. He wouldn't take no for an answer. After about a month, I finally said yes. Mind you, at this point he hadn't seen me naked not even in a bathing suit the very night that i said yes to being his girlfriend he asked me to come over to his place he made a whole gourmet dinner even bought super expensive wine so we ended up doing it for the first time that night the next morning when i woke up the first thing he said to me was do you ever exercise i was shocked part two is up